everyone, it's Sevi. Spiral Abyss has reset with a new enemy lineup this version 3.2. This cycle's blessing is a straightforward damage addition via true damage. As always, I'll be demoing this abyss with all 4 stars, Dendro Traveler being the only exception since everyone has them. Of course, it will be much easier with 5 star upgrades, so no need to follow my characters or templates, I will be discussing positioning strategies and enemy weaknesses instead. Anyway, let's get into it. Floor 11 has an Elemental Mastery buff which will help if you are choosing reaction teams. For your first half team, insert whichever of your units have reliable DPS. You can include an Archer if you want to disable the Ruined Skydrakes later but it's not necessary like what I did. The first half enemies aren't remarkable and the timer is very long so you can afford to be a bit lax. Here I used a Reverse Melt team of Rosaria, Bennett, Shangling, and Chongyun. As for the second team, the DPS check isn't high, it just has more particular demands than the first half. The second half prefers units that are good in multi-target scenarios and which can output good single target damage for the Dendro cube. It also requires at least one Dendro unit to finish off the cube and having an Electro will help. So to accommodate those units, I used an Aggravate team with Denjo Traveler along with two Electros. Crowd control units will help with the mobs, which I included Sucrose for, but it isn't really necessary. Starting off with the first chamber, it spawns Hydro, Animo, Cryo, and Geo Spectres in groups of four, the first one starting in front of you. The Spectres are grouped quite close together, so AoE abilities will help massively. They spawn low enough that you can hit them straight away with melee units. Avoid getting frozen by the Cryo and Hydro projectiles though. The next wave spawns to one side which you can run to. Spectres take some time to explode once their HP is depleted, but while they're doing that you can already run to the next wave. Let's light it up! Submit for judgment! Cow, you can't run! The last wave spawns across the previous one, so simply sprint over there and finish them off. Out of the frying pan! A touch of frost! Judgment! Let's light it up! The second half is mostly Aramites. The first three waves spawn melee Aramites. The melee ones will follow you around, but the archers spawn independently and counterclockwise around the map. They only walk slowly towards you, so it's preferable to kill the archers first or group them together with the melee enemies to kill them all together. Each time you kill one archer, a new one will spawn. Stand with me. Stand clear. New you are not welcome here. Scatter. At some point, the Thunderbreak Aramites will spawn as well as the Pyro Fatui agent. In this last wave, just survive against the Pyro hits of the Fatui as those can hurt. Good news is you have a lot of time, so you can be quite careful and patient with the mobs. Wings of darkness. The next chamber only has two Ruin Drakes. They spawn low enough to be hit with melee attacks, but it's good to have a bow user on the team in case they end up flying high up and you need to disable them. Their weak spots are their wings, however in my case I just settled with using melee units. They spawn a bit far apart, so instead of waiting for them to drift closer, I simply targeted one first then moved on to the next. Let's light it up! Spirit In the second half, we have mobs again. The first wave of three Nobushi spawn in front of you, but I position myself to where the next group will spawn so I can taunt them there and conveniently kill the next group there as well. Then the third wave after that spawns opposite you. However, the Nobushi zoom towards you anyway, so you don't really have to relocate, they will come to you if you can wait. Uh. 
The last wave has three potioneers and one mirror maiden, but the potioneers are very spread out. I prefer to target the cryo one first because it was nearest me and because it can potentially freeze you if you also get wet from the mirror maiden. In general, I tried to get the potioneers out of the way first before focusing on the mirror maiden, which is pretty doable since there is a lot of time left. Just watch out for the bubbles. Entering the last chamber of this floor, here there are simply two Geo Bishops. You can wait for them to drop down towards you, or you can start attacking one while the other moves to you. Once they're together, AoE attacks will kill them quickly. Just dodge their heavy attacks since they can stagger you quite a bit. Let's light it up! And finally, we have the new Denjo Hypostasis boss. Fighting it generally just involves you dodging its attack patterns, and then using your attacks once the core is vulnerable. Some patterns will encase the core, and those you'll have to wait out before the core is vulnerable again. There are instances though where it's exposed even while it attacks you. Some of the attacks involve vines, which can be disrupted by burning them with pyro if you have one. Once its health is low enough, you just need to apply Denjo on the cleansing pits. Apply Electro to the ones you've activated already to speed up the cleansing process. If you have Pyro on the team, avoid using it as Pyro will scorch the pith and stop progress. You have a long time to cleanse it. As long as you have the Dendro and ideally Electro, it should be over in one go. Moving on to floor 12. This abyss floor has a normal leyline flow and some layers of RNG to it. For the first half, you will want a form of crowd control to gather, stagger, and disable enemies. You also want an archer for the Drake boss in the third chamber. Electro units will help against the rift towns, but they aren't required. If you bring a shielder, the serpent knights in chamber 2 will get buffs from attacking you while you're shielded. You can still bring one, but that can prolong the run, or you can just rely on healing. My chosen team was a Sucrose Hyper Bloom team where she held a prototype Amber to be a pseudo healer. Fischl was the Electro Source and Archer, Singcho was my fast Hydro app and helped me survive, and Denjo Traveler was my Denjo unit. Hyper Bloom helped a lot since the cores could home in on enemies that weren't getting hit by my abilities. For the second half, bring hard-hitting DPSs, but not Electro since Thunder Manifestation is immune to it. A ranged character might be helpful against the Thunder Manifestation since it has a tendency to move around a lot. Shields and healing will definitely help you survive since the second half enemies can hit hard. This first chamber spawns small and large Electro Rift Hounds. The first waves of small Rift Hounds can be gathered in one place by sticking to the edge of the map. I mainly focused on dodging while rotating my abilities. If you can dodge enough, it helps you avoid taking some corrosion. Most of this is quite straightforward since the smaller Rift Hounds will target you pretty consistently, so you don't really have to chase them. The last to spawn are two large rift hounds. These can get a bit annoying since they move around way more than the smaller ones. Still, stick to the edge while targeting them. Witness the power of Gugwa. Rain as much as possible, try to have your energy full by the end of this chamber for a clean start to the next one. Animal test 6308. <laughs> This second half has the dreaded Thunder Manifestation. This boss can't be disabled, so you instead have to get familiar with its attack patterns so you know when to dodge and when to start your abilities. When it spawns, I'm usually able to get at least one rotation in. Attack. We go! 
it will have this electro screen that closes in on you, and if you're caught when they meet, it can one-shot you. Instead, dodge out of it when it's near. One attack it has is this electro cage that follows you around. If you have your bursts ready, you can go up to the boss, put down your healer, and depend on iframes to tank the cage while you activate your bursts. Otherwise, just sprint around and try to dodge it, but run towards the boss. This one does have a lot of time wasters, and sometimes you get unlucky with the attack patterns, and will make you want to restart just to get it under time. For example, it can teleport to the edge, which will tempt you to run towards it, and then it'll teleport back to the center, causing you to run back. When that happens, you can wait it out, or it will spawn that electro cage, which, again, you will want to either iframe or dodge. Spirit blade. Attack. One with my blade. The next chamber contains two waves of Serpent Knights. This enemy group will gain certain buffs if it hits you while you have a shield, not including crystallized shields. So to avoid all that, I just didn't bring a shielder. Unfortunately, these enemies are a bit difficult to crowd control, as sometimes they can just zoom or wander away from you. Sucrose's skill and burst can help stagger and disable them, but there is, again, a bit of RNG to how they move around. Watch out for their attacks as well, since they can stagger you quite a bit. Just try to dodge, funnel your energy well, and keep them together as much as possible. These knights are quite tanky, and the second wave is even a bit tankier, so this definitely feels like a DPS check. The second wave has Hydro and Cryo Knights, so there is some potential to get frozen by them. But like the last wave, dodge as much as you can, use your crowd control abilities, and use your rotations to finish them off. Witness the power of Gugwa. Rain outlines your fate. Midnight Phantasmagor. <laughs> Animal test 6308. Animal hyperstasis emulation. Absorption test. <laughs> 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 Next, we have some Lava Churls. The first wave has two Frost Arm Lava Churls. These ones have attacks that can trap you, freeze the ground and deal damage over time, and even one-shot you. So shielders can save you a lot here. I didn't use a shielder though, so I was heavily reliant on iframes and dodging. If you have time to spare, you have the option of waiting out the Lava Churls Hulk smashes, so you're less in danger of dying. Everybody stand back! But I was essentially just going through my bursts and rotations to brute force it and kill them as fast as possible. After those Lava Churls die, two Electro Lava Churls will spawn, and you can follow the same principle of dodging while rotating your abilities. Like the previous ones, these enemies will aggro you, so you don't have to chase them around. The Pyro and Cryo abilities here in particular help deplete their Electro armor. Moving on to the final chamber. In this first half of the final chamber, we have the Eon Blight Drake. This boss can fly up, and that's where your archer will come in handy. Shoot down both weak spots on the wings, and it will be disabled for a while so that you can do your abilities on it. Let me leave you a first. Rain out my, my royal <laughs> Absorption test. Swirl, mark two. This boss has some sweeping hits that you can simply dodge or iframe. Midnight Phantasmagoria. Scatter! Bring forth! Rain cutter! No my sword! Rain outlines. It also has a move where it starts charging and gains increased elemental resistance against an absorbed element. If it's grounded during this, shoot the weak point at its head. Clear. 
This enemy has less RNG involved than the previous chambers, so it's more of a straightforward DPS chamber. Finally, this last half features enemies that should be familiar to you if you did the last abyss cycle. The first wave spawns in front of you with a Gale Hunter plus an Animal Boxer Fatui. These enemies are quite straightforward, you can just go through your rotation and use AoE abilities to kill them both. At a certain health level, the Gale Hunter will spawn a Vulture with its own HP. That doesn't happen here because she dies too fast. But if it does, you can either attack the Vulture and once it's dead, the Gale Hunter will be vulnerable. The next wave has a Stone Enchanter Aramite and a Geobracer Fatui, and these two have the same premise as the last wave. It is preferable though to kill the Geo Fatui first before it gets its shield up. This chamber is probably the easiest and most straightforward out of the chambers on floor 12, so hopefully if you reach this far, it's more of a breeze. From whence you came. Punishment. <laughs> and that's all for this abyss guide. Let me know in the comments how you find this abyss cycle and which teams you used against it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!